Watercolor is known to be one of the best ways to relax, but I think there's another medium out there that performs even better. Or let's say just very differently. Hi, I'm Hansoise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Just yesterday, I couldn't help and shoot that short video of my girls coloring because that totally reminds me of how fun it was to draw without really caring about the end result. And while watercolor is fun to watch, especially when the paints mingle together, this medium that I want to show you is fun to feel. It's profoundly satisfying, in fact. And there are a lot of misconceptions about this medium, oil pastels. So if you don't like them, please hear me out. Because it's one of those underrated mediums that might surprise you. And I'm going to show you exactly why and how they are so relaxing. I made a few videos about them on my channel. I've even made some sculpture classes. And the one thing I can tell you is very important to distress with oil pastels is creaminess. I always, always look for this quality in an oil pastel. And this will be the main aspect I look at in this video, as well as opacity and color vibrancy. So we can make great artwork. So creaminess is very important, as well as working on smooth paper with some slight texture to it. I only collaborate with brands when I'm genuinely interested. So when Paul Rubin switched out with their latest set of oil pastel colors, the Haya set, I was intrigued since I've heard about their watercolor supplies and seen good reviews. I use oil pastels for fun and it's not my main medium. So I really don't mind using affordable brands, even if this means less light fastness than more established brands. You can feel the creaminess of an oil pastel as soon as you lay it on paper. It really should glide like lipstick. The difference between dry oil pastels, lipstick, and creamy oil pastels, I think is obvious here. And so far, this Haya set seems very promising to me. So let's see what it's like to paint with creamy oil pastels and how it feels when you need to distress. I'll try to do my best and let you know. Creamy oil pastels are fantastic because you're allowed to let go and make a big mess. To make a mess that turns into realistic art later, first you'll need to focus on blocking in your main colors. And like I would with any medium, first I pick my colors. And in this set, I like that they have so many muted and earthy tones because that's exactly what I love to use. So I'm going for this white choice of colors and I'm just going into this winging it just to have fun. I've never tried this paper before, but I know it's going to be good since it's for oil pastels. And also I've seen that the oil pastels seem very creamy, so I'm confident. And the oil pastels glide on paper beautifully. They feel effortless to just lay on paper. It's really just like lipstick. And look at the mess I'm making too. Just trying to block in the main colors in the stormy sky I want to paint. So I'm adding a lot of dark tones there, but I know that it's better to hold off on these until the next layer. So I'm being careful. And what I like to do with oil pastels, it works well with those creepy ones, is to overlap white on top to make lighter colors. I love that this white yields plenty of coverage too. And you can see how my blues turn into something lighter right away. As you can see, this is very messy on the page. It's no problem with oil pastels, it's actually pretty normal. So let's be kids again for a bit and just aim at improving this later little by little. And if you thought that the anti-stress therapy stopped here, think again, because it's actually going to be even better next with the blending. When you use oil pastels like me with a very smooth and realistic look, a very satisfying way to blend them is to use a paper towel. This technique works very well for the large areas. It's just perfect for a background like this one. And one thing that you should notice is that it should feel very easy to blend the oil pastels, especially when they're creamy. And that is how it feels so satisfying to feel the pigment melt and mix together right under your fingertips. When I have too much oil pastels in one area, it will feel a little bit slippery. So what I do is I transfer that to other areas where I think I need it because maybe I didn't have enough there or I needed more color. If, on the other hand, blending oil pastels doesn't feel easy and fun, that it feels tedious, that you have to press really hard, either your oil pastels are dry, and you would have noticed from just cribbling with them when you think of the lipstick comparison, 
Or it could also be that you're using a paper that isn't great for oil pastels, either it's too smooth or too textured. And the other possibility is that you did not apply enough oil pastel on paper and you can feel the scratchiness of the paper too much and that's what's preventing you from blending them so well. For example, here with my painting, it's particularly visible in the grassy area because I didn't apply enough greens nor browns, so there is not enough to cover everything up and you can actually see the white of the paper in places. And that's no big deal, you just have to add more oil pastel later. But another tip for you when you're blending is to blend the oil pastels with circular motions because that really helps in spreading the pigment all around very smoothly and evenly. And I'll link my Skillshare classes on that topic in the description of the video if you want to learn it in real time with easy projects. Otherwise, tell me if this is something you'd like to see on my Patreon. Now you can see that I have a pretty good opaque and colorful base. So, so far I can tell you that I'm genuinely enjoying these oil pastels. They're a keeper when they act like this for me. And I hope you're still with me because we can do a lot more with oil pastels and just stop there because I want to add to my landscape. I want to add contrast and also fix colors in some areas and make the blending even smoother. So I'm going to layer over this base and we'll take advantage of that to see how the Paul Rubens oil pastels do in that category. Another thing that I appreciate about oil pastels is that you can make realistic art and you can add some detail, but it's difficult to add too much detail, which is perfect for perfectionists. At first, I recommend to take on easy landscape where it's mostly sky and either water or land. Avoid details, you could even try just simple backgrounds just to get used to it. Although it's also absolutely possible to paint in greater detail if you want to. There are actually many tools that you can use in combination to the oil pastels. So first I'm noticing that with Paul Rubin's oil pastels, the light colors are actually going over the dark blended ones really easy. And that's a huge plus because that means that there are less limits for us to paint anything we want. But remember, it really starts with the creaminess and next the paper and then good coverage. This would be the next thing that I look at, how colors layer. And I'm really happy with how I'm able to shape the clouds little by little. At first, who would have thought it was even possible to make that sky brighter in the middle and so smooth while also shaping clouds? That's why sometimes I don't understand why some mediums just like oil pastels and watercolor pencils are so underrated because the art is fun and not limiting at all. And I'd love to know your thoughts about that if you want to tell me in the comments and what your point of view is about those type of underrated mediums or if you know any other ones that I should try. Now this guy looks great. I managed to shape the clouds the way I wanted to and add all the colors where I wanted them to be. I'm gonna layer some more on the ground and right away, you can see that with darker colors, I'm able to get more definition. And with other colors, I'm also able to get a great balance overall and a great contrast in the art. Today, I'm not gonna add a whole bunch of detail, I could, but I'm just gonna use the tip of the oil pastels to add a few flowers. And you can see how we can do that without getting into too much detail. You can even use a gel pen like this if you're careful and you wipe it off frequently to add strong highlights. These high out oil pastels officially make the list of creamy ones that yield great results. So thank you very much Paul Rubens for sending them over. We have a discount code for you in the description of the video along with all the links to find these oil pastels. And if you'd like more insight about the huge difference creamy oil pastels make compared to dry ones in one same painting, you can watch this video next. Thank you for sticking around and see you next time.